Hey guys and welcome to the show. So in today's video of the series, I'm going to be showing you how you can create obstacles at random for our T-Rex runner to jump over and duck under. To ensure that you don't miss out on any of these fantastic videos, please be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell below. Alright, so here we are in our game. So the first thing I'd like to introduce you to are these awesome little obstacle sprites we've got here. We've got a couple different types of small cacti. We've got a couple different types of large cacti. And we have the pterodactyl, which flaps his wings, something like that. So let's go ahead and create a new object. I'm going to call this OBJ obstacle. And in the step event, I'm going to say add step event over here. Speed equals minus 20. I'm going to times that by something called a global dot speed modifier. Now, we haven't introduced the speed modifier global variable before, but when we do initialize it, it'll just have a value of 1. In future videos, we're going to be changing the speed modifier and incrementing it as time goes by to therefore create that sense of speed that the game has. Also, if the x coordinates of this obstacle is less than negative 100, then I'm going to destroy it. Cool. So it doesn't hang around in memory when the user can't even see it. Next up, let's go ahead and create a controller. This is the most important part of having obstacles. We need some sort of controller to create them. The controller is going to now initialize the global speed modifier to 1. And I'm going to create an alarm. First alarm is going to be a 0. Room speed times 3. And this is to start creating the obstacles. Then within the alarm 0, I'm going to say randomize var count equals i random range 1, 2. I've noticed in the Google Chrome game that sometimes it creates uh, one cactus instead of like multiple cacti. So in this case, I'm saying that the maximum it can create is two, um, but there's also the chance that it can create just one. var i equals instance create layer room width uh, plus 100 so it's 100 pixels off to the right hand side of the screen room height is going to be minus 75 I've done these calculations before so they should be spot on it's going to be the instances layer and I'm creating an instance of object obstacle there we go, let me make this a bit wider, like that, very good. So the sprite index of this newly created instance is going to be uh, something random. We can say it's either a cactus, well a small cactus, it's either a large cactus, or it's one of those pterodactyls. And then next, I'm going to switch on those outcomes to control what to do with that obstacle. Okay, so we grab each of these. If it's a small cactus or it's a large cactus, I'm going to say that the image uh, speed is going to be zero because we don't want it flicking through the cactuses. They're not going to physically move. I'm also going to say that um, if the global speed modifier is greater than 1.5, then we can create a second one if the game needs it. Um, I don't want multiple obstacles to be created one next to each other until a, a bit of time has progressed in the game. So if count is equal to 2, I'm going to say var j equals, uh, I can just grab this whole guy again over here. Put it there to change this to J. J, and it can only be one of the two cacti. And also J speed equals zero. And then I'm gonna break out of this. And here I'm gonna say default. Default being the pterodactyl. The image speed equals one. And the Y coordinate is going to be 
choose uh, room height minus 85 room height minus 145 or room height minus 180 so they are three different heights for a pterodactyl there's a pterodactyl that the player can just run under doesn't have to do anything there's the pterodactyl that the player either has to jump over or duck under and then lastly there's the pterodactyl that the player absolutely must jump over he can't uh, duck under it so those are the three different types there very good and one thing I've noticed here is that I actually need to randomize the image uh, image index so I'm going to say choose and here's going to be oh actually let's make it I random range between 0 and sprite get number and that gets me the number of sub images there are in a sprite so here I'm going to say the sprite of I dot sprite index and this is going to be minus 1 because if there are 5 sub images in the sprite we need to make sure that we don't go over um, that fifth one when we try to access it via an index because it is zero based and I'm going to do the same over here image index of j is j dot sprite index zero and the maximum number of sub images very good now lastly I'm going to go back to the create and I'm going to copy this alarm zero code I'm going to place it after it's created um, n many of these obstacles and here I'm going to say that instead of doing it on the third second so in this case the game is going to start then three seconds later we're going to have our first obstacle we don't always want it to be three seconds we need to take into account how fast the game is going so I'm going to say room speed times random range one divided by the global uh, game speed uh, what's that come up again global dot speed modifier to three divided by the global speed modifier. So that's our algorithm over there. It's going to say that we're going to be creating an obstacle between these two values. It's a random range, so it could be decimal places in between those, which is really great. Kind of makes the game more exciting. Uh, it could get more and more challenging depending on who's playing at what time. And uh, I think that should actually be it for now. Let's go to our, our game world into our instances layer and let's drag that controller in. So it should create the uh, obstacles just around here like 100 pixels out to the right hand side and then they'll come in from the right to the left and then they'll get deleted when they're the same pixels away from the game frame on the left just to ensure that the memory is getting cleaned up and we don't have to worry about uh, things getting a little too large over time so that should actually work um, let's hit the play button and see what happens we'll fix any errors that do occur oh goodness I've got an extra global here okay that can go away save and run Okay, so here we have our dinosaur, we can jump still, we can duck as usual. Oh, our first cactus, it's quite a big one. And there's our first pterodactyl, he's the highest kind. Another big cactus, smaller cactus, larger cactus, another large cactus, that was quite... Oh, this is the middle kind of pterodactyl, jumping over the other cactus. So things seem to be working quite well. I don't see any double um, cacti yet, single ones, because obviously we're not incrementing that speed modifier just yet. The speed is exactly the same, it's not changing. The game should be pretty much as easy or as difficult as it ever would be. This is quite easy to jump over these and duck under them. Okay guys, well I hope you found this tutorial educational and helpful. Next up we will be increasing the speed at which these objects are created and moving to make the game a little bit more challenging, especially when you have to try and guess which pterodactyls to jump over, which ones to duck under, and which ones to ignore. That one's definitely a duck. Well, if you found this tutorial educational and helpful, please feel free to comment, rate, and subscribe. Remember, if you want to get the next part of this video uh, first, be sure to hit that notification bell so that you can get a notification when the next part comes out. If you like this video and want to contribute to this channel, please check out my Patreon campaign. Links are in the description. There's also a link for the project files so far. I really do appreciate your support, everyone. Until next time, happy coding, and I'll see you then.